You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettes out there in Gwinnett land and all of my friends around the world. It is a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. 76 degrees going up to a high of 87. It's going gonna, it's gonna to feel like summer today. I'm already prepped for it. I'm already prepped for it. It is going to be a beautiful day. It's already beautiful. I was outside already. It was gorgeous. I was like, oh, it's gorgeous out here. But it's going up to 7, uh, 87, so it's going to be hot. That's a little hot. Thank God we're in Georgia with air conditioners. Let me tell you, when I was in Jersey, there was no... You can't find a lot of houses and apartments in Jersey with central air and heat. So when I moved to Georgia, I realized you can't live without central air. If you, I don't know how people can live without central air and heat in Georgia. Like, our air conditioner went out one time, and it was hilarious because the air conditioner went out. They had to come and fix it, but they, they were gonna, it was going to take them a couple of days because in the summertime, it gets so hot here... And the HVAC people, they are super, super busy, right? And so our air conditioner went out. Now, when I was in Jersey, you put your air conditioner in the window and it stayed in the window all year round. You covered it up with some plastic. So when when the wintertime came, the, the cold air couldn't come in. When the summertime came, you took the plastic off the air conditioner so you can turn the AC on. Here in Georgia, you know, it's central air and heat. So the air conditioning system goes out and it's hot. And I'm like, okay, this is crazy. We went to Walmart and we bought, everybody had an air condition for their bedroom, except my uncle. He's always cold. Like he has a, he has a heat on all year long in his room. He's always cold. He literally has the heat on all year long in his room. Um, but my mom, myself and my husband, and then we put a, um, uh, uh, air conditioner in the living room. We bought three air conditioners and I know they were probably at Walmart thinking like, what is happening right now? It was so hot y'all. And somebody came to our house. It was so funny. They was like, Oh, the, the air conditioning guy, when he did come right to fix the air condition, he's like, Oh, y'all went old school. Y'all put the air condition in the window. Like, bro, it's hot. Like, we, we're not playing games up in here. But listen, that was a norm for us in Jersey. To have your AC unit in the window was a norm. You know, we moved to Georgia. It's like, you know, central air and heat is a norm. But when the AC went out, we kind of went on over to Walmart and bought three air conditioners and put them in the window. Like, we can't sleep like this. But anyway, I said all that to say. It's going to be a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. Hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are. Today is Tuesday. You know, they call it Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Um, I went to, um, I went to tacos. I, I don't know if I'm saying that backwards tacos and tequila or tequila and tacos, whichever one it is. I went there for my husband's birthday. So I've gone three times now. I actually like their food and I actually want tacos today, which is the craziest thing. I want some tacos. Um, and I was thinking about that and I was thinking about maybe making spaghetti, but I really want some tacos. So I'm thinking about telling him, let's go get some tacos later. Cause that's what I got a taste for. And I like going there. I like the atmosphere. Um, and so right there on, um, 124 and Snellville on scenic highway, there's a tacos and tequila or tequila and taco. I'm always missing the name up, but check it out. I like their foods. Now everybody doesn't like their food. I happen to like the food. I like the corn taco shell. Yes, that's what I'm in love with. Like, that's what I, I, I told my husband. I need some chicken and avocados, onions, some chipotle on the taco shell. That's what I got a taste for. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Today is Talk Business Tuesday, baby. Listen, stick around because you got to hear my new song that I got coming out that's, that came out this morning. It's called Knock Down the Door. Yes, you know your girl been having a good time making songs. And this this is a good episode. It's Talk Business Tuesday. And today I'm going to be talking about you can make money from your passion. I didn't know what I was going to talk about today. Uh, I knew I was going to talk about business. See, talking about business comes second, comes, it's like, it's like second nature to me. Like it's, it's always easy for me to talk about business. Um, and so what happened was early this morning, my daughter called me around about six forty-five, seven o'clock, about seven o'clock, I think. And she was telling me, you know, she's been in media like me for a long time. I put her in acting when she was acting school, when she was a little girl. Um, she wound up dancing from like the age of three to she got out of high school and then she went to college and she danced again. So she likes the arts, right? Which I happen to like the arts too. I'm just not artsy, but behind this computer, I'm a beast. So she had been talking about, um, she started, she produced like a, um, 
a, a series called Dating Amari. It was a web series. She did season one, season two, so she loved doing that. She got a little bit of burn because on the on season two, the the photographer, the um the, the director and the videographer actually messed up the sound, and then they went AWOL and never gave him like like a, a completed season. I think it was episode two, so she couldn't do the seasons. Anyway, that's all beside the point. She had been talking about, you know, she does a podcast with um, a call. People think about it, co-hosted with the person who started the podcast. His name is Lamar Clark and his wife, Dorchelle. She's the producer of the show. So do people think about it every Wednesday, a new episode drops at eight o'clock. So she likes podcasting. Of course, I like podcasting too. So it only made sense. So she was talking about expanding her brand and all that kind of stuff. And she was thinking about maybe I'll do another show. So she had a show. Um, she does what's called, she has a show called, Dolly said it right. Her show is called Dolly said it, and it was supposed to be a thirty-minute self-improvement show, personal development self-improvement show. And she said, "I'm going to do that." I said, okay, great. Now she had been doing the word of the day on on Instagram. I think that's what she does, like on a regular basis. The word of the day. She does the word of the day. She does it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it's just a blurb, and it's about the word of the day. So she calls me this morning. She's like, "You know, I've been thinking. I'm struggling with doing Dolly said it." It's, it's a struggle for me. It's not fun. It's stressing me out. But she said, when I do the word of the day, it's exciting. I'm excited about it. I get it done and it's done. And I said, well, listen, you have to do what's, what you're passionate about. Hence is why we're talking about making money with your passion today. I said, you have to do what you're, what you're passionate about. So across her social media platform, she has about 20,000 something followers between probably almost 30 because she got 12 on she got 12 on TikTok. I think she said she has five on Instagram. She got eight or something on Facebook or vice versa. She has a lot of following. And to some people, that's not a whole lot, but that's a good, that's a good start. And so I said to her, you have to do what you're passionate about, because if you don't do what you're passionate about, you're not going to do the thing, right? For me, I love doing this show. Now, are there days when I'm like stressed out? I'm like, oh God, I, I really don't have nothing to talk about. Mondays are usually that day for me. Here's why. Because on Monday, I talk about news. And so if there's nothing happening over the weekend in Gwinnett County that makes for newsworthy content for me, and I'm talking about, I'm not talking about bad news because there's always some bad news. I don't want to talk about bad news. Hence is why I don't talk about bad news on the show. But Mondays are a struggle for me because the weekends are pretty quiet. There's a lot of family time going on. It's not so much happening in the news, so it's pretty quiet. So Mondays are a struggle for me. As much as I like Mondays, doing the show on Monday is a struggle for me because nothing has really happened over the weekend that I want to talk about. So I have to get up and have to dig, 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 dig and find the news to bring it to you guys on Monday. So I was talking to her about, you know, following your passion and you're going to be dedicated to it if you if it's something you're passionate about. And she gets that. And she's like, you know what? I feel like this is it. Like, this is my thing. And I said, and I said, so do that thing. Well, here's the thing. Right after I had the conversation with her, one of, one of the members of the chamber who now who I now consider a really good friend, she started out as a client. Um, I, she, I met her because she took my podcasting class. So she started out as a client. Now she's a friend, which is, you know, it, sometimes it happens that way. And she called me. We had a conversation about a month ago. And it was a conversation about couples and communication and what, what a struggle that is for most people. Like, that's a struggle. That is a struggle for most people. I said, and most people don't understand that if you can't communicate, nothing else really matters. I don't care how much money you make. If the communication sucks, it's going to be a problem. So she's a pastor. And I said to her, man, I said, this communication thing is rough. And she, so, and so she was kind of giving me some, some advice about some stuff, you know, some things, some issues I was having at the moment. And communication was like the problem with the whole thing. It was a communications issue. And she was talking, talking, talking. So I gave her, I said, listen, you should do a, you should do a workshop called love speak. And she says, oh my God. So she started taking notes. And so we ran. So this is how my brain work y'all. <laughs> Come to me with a concept. We're gonna, I'm going to create a plan for you. My daughter came to me this morning and said, this is what I want to do. And I literally had a whole plan in my head and started spitting out. So I said to her at the end, hey, do I need to send that to you in an email? <laughs> she said, you know you do because my mind is not calculating as fast as you put spitting this stuff out. So I have to send her an email later about her plan for her, what she's trying to do. So so my, my, my friend, she was saying, you know, I was telling her that's an issue. I said, a lot of people face that issue. I said, um... You know, and I think you're going to help a lot of people, especially couples 
who are struggling right now because of a bad communication patterns that they have in their relationship. So she put, she put together a flyer. She came to one of our breakfasts. Speaking of breakfast, it's a breakfast coming up this Friday. She put together the flyer. She came to the breakfast. And I said to her, just put the fly out, just introduce yourself as, you know, as a relationship coach. Cause she's been coaching, she's a pastor. So she's been coaching couples for for years because she's a pastor and she do premarital coaching and she does premarital, uh, postmarital coaching. She does, you know, she's been doing this for a long time. She, she just never really put it into a business perspective. Right. So she calls me this morning and she was so excited. She got her first person to sign up for the workshop. That's going to be in June. She's like, I'm so excited. She said, you don't understand. This is my passion. This is what I've been doing for years for free. She's been doing it for free. She said, this is my passion. She said, when I hear couples going through struggles and I know that the communications is a problem, I just want to cry. She said, because we can fix that. This is my passion. So that's how my topic for today is making money from your passion because I I've done a lot of things in my life, y'all. You've heard me say this. I've been an entrepreneur for 20, 27 years. I started out as just an entrepreneur. I didn't have a real passion. I had an idea, an idea. God gave me this wonderful idea to invent these dolls, D-O-L-L-S dolls. I invented the first plus size fashion doll. He gave me that idea. And I ran with that idea with my good friend, Georgette, who became my business partner. We ran with that idea with the dolls. We were so focused, but... Was it necessarily a passion for me? Nah, it was a way for me to make money because all I kept thinking about, oh my God, we're going to be rich, right? That's what I was thinking. And I ran, we ran the company for five years and then we um, dissolved the company in 2005. But by that time I understood like, okay, there are a lot of things I could do in this space. So I wrote some books. I became a business consultant with Rutgers Small Business Development Center. But for years, y'all, I was not following any kind of passion. All I was doing was chasing down money. For, when I tell you years, years. It wasn't until 2000 and I think 2018 when I launched Good Morning Gwinnett, when I actually stopped chasing money. We talking about what, 21 years ago? Like I chased, so the first five years I wasn't really chasing money. I was, I was building something from an idea, right? So that was five years. And then six years I've been doing, so, so out of my 27 years, 27 years I've been doing, 16 of those were, was me chasing money. Out of my 20, so five years I ran a business manufacturing in Hong Kong, all of that good stuff. That was straight up. We wasn't chasing money. It was a big idea. God gave me. We turned into a business. Then in between 2000, from 2000 and I'm going to say, I'm not going to say I was chasing money. I'm going to say from 2000 and um, probably 2009. So from 2009, because at 2008, 2006 through eight, I was a consultant with Rutgers. So I was kind of, I was learning how to be a coach. You know, they call it a consultant, but you're really coaching. So I was learning how to be a coach from 2000, from 2006 to 2008. I was, I was working at Rutgers as a small business development. And I was working with Rutgers University, small business development center and King University with a guy named Herb, Herb, Herb as a small business development center uh, consultant for King University. So from 2006 to 2008, I was a small business development center, SBDC. That's what we call it. Consultant. And then from 2008 to 2018 was that 10 years yeah from 2008 i was chasing money i did all kinds of stuff i sold magnets i sold i sold i did i did all kinds of stuff y'all i did all kinds of stuff there was no passion there because i was in i was in i was in mode i was in a mode that i had to make some money so i could sustain myself and my family right my husband makes great money. He was taking care of a lot of this stuff, but I wanted to be able to contribute to my family as well. So from 2008 to 2018, I was chasing money. Even when I started Good Morning Gwinnett, I was still kind of chasing money, but I love podcasting. So I kept doing it. It's my passion. How do I know it's my passion? Because I get up every day, even on the Mondays when I'm like, man, I don't know what I'm going to talk about today because I know it's not a lot of news in the news. So I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. It's my passion. It's my purpose. And I love it. I love media. I love being in the media space. I love being a media entrepreneur. I love this. This is why I do this podcast. This is why I launched the Gwinnett Morning Spark newsletter. And I started doing newsletters way back when. 
Now, you may be saying, Audrey, that's all good and fine. You talked about your passion. How can I make money from my passion? All right, so here's the thing. First of all, you got to figure out what your passion is. That's the very first thing. And and that's that's important because and some people say, oh, forget about passion. I'm not saying that because I have, done, remember what I just said, 10 years I was chasing money following other people's passion. I sold all kinds of stuff because I was chasing money. Nothing was passionate about it. It was all money driven. There were some people who would tell you, go get the money first and then find your passion. I'm going to tell you, I don't agree with that. And the reason I don't agree with that is because when you chase money, you are miserable most of the time because you're not passionate about the thing that you're doing. Even if the money motivates you for a while, the motivation is going to wear off because it's not something that you really care about. I'm talking from experience. I'm not talking from just nowhere. I'm talking about from experience. There have been so many things that I have done. And it was because I was chasing the dollar bill. I was chasing Benjamin and Benjamin was running from me because I was not passionate about Benjamin. And and I was only passionate about Benjamin and not the thing that I was supposed to be doing to get Benjamin. I sold girdles. I sold Avon. I sold so many. Listen, y'all, I was chasing money. I want you to do that. I want you to take a minute. I want you to think about the thing that you would do. And I know for some of you, you've heard this a million times before. How about you hear it a million and one? And this may be the this may be the breakthrough you have been looking for. Take some time. It's a beautiful day. I don't know where you are in the world, but wherever you are, it's still a beautiful day. Even if it's extremely cold, it's a beautiful day. Take today, take a take an hour out of your day. Sit by yourself. Think about the things that you love. Think about the things that you enjoy doing. Think about what that would be like if you could make money doing that thing. Now, I will say this. There are some artsy people, some crafty people. They love doing crafts, but they suck at business. And so when they have to turn their craft or their hobby into a business, it's not fun for them anymore. I want you to think about the thing that you can do, whether you're making money or not, and it's still going to be fun. For this show, for the first five, four and a half years, I made no money. It was just me talking to you every day, making no money. I didn't really start making money until last year. No, yeah, last year I started make, started to make money from the show. And that's because I was making a little bit of money here and there, but I really started making decent money last year from the show. But here's the thing. I knew no matter what happened, I wasn't going to quit. And I said to myself, you do that show and you don't quit the show. You pivot, you make adjustments, you do whatever you have to do, but you don't quit that show. And I don't mind getting up here talking every day. Like, this is why I talk. So I want you to find that thing that that you love and and you would do it whether you're making money or not. Yes, it's going to be stressful. Let me just say that. I'm not saying it's not going to be stressful. It is going to be stressful. But I do it anyway. I do it on Mondays when I don't have any news to talk about because the only thing people do on the weekends around here is have fun. Now, unless I come back and bring up, talk about all the fun things we did, which I could do that. But most of the time I'm so tired. I don't go out and have too much fun. I'm somewhere laying up in the bed watching a uh, 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 Hallmark channel or YouTube. That's what I'm doing. But I'm going to come back. I'm going to give you some ideas on how to figure out what your passion is and what, what are your next steps? All right. I'm going to a song. Speaking of passions, I'm loving, I'm loving. So I do a newsletter, Gwinnett Morning Spark. Every morning, there's a new song that I produce for the newsletter. The song today is Knock Down the Door. And I got some plans for that. Like, yeah, Knock Down the Door. So check out my new song for the day. It's called Knock Down the Door. I'll be right back after the song to give you more of how to make money from your passion. All right, stay tuned. Knock down the doors, we ain't waiting no more. Pushing through the fears, hear the crowd roar. Every barrier, every lock, every closed gate. We're here to conquer, let's dominate. Started from the bottom, dreams in my pocket Every no I got, turned into a rocket Fuel to my fire, blaze through the wire Climbing higher, my situation dire No handouts, just standouts Life through punches, I plan routes Knocking down walls, breaking the chains Every loss I took, turning the gains Knock down the doors, we ain't waiting no more Pushing through the fears, hear the crowd roar Every barrier, 
Every lock, every closed gate We're here to conquer, let's dominate I see a closed door I don't see a stop sign My heart's on the line, but this past mine Been told to quit, but I redefine Turning every setback into a gold mine Persistence, my essence, resistance, my lesson Success ain't a gift, it's a fought for possession Banging on the future, loud with my knocks When one door closes, I open up blocks No limit, no stop, just grit and grind Every no you throw fuels this climb From dusk till dawn, my will won't bend Against all odds, I'll transcend Knock down the doors, we ain't waiting no more Pushing through the fears, hear the crowd roar Every barrier, every lock, every closed gate We're here to conquer, let's dominate So here's my anthem, here's my plea From every lock, I craft a key Knocking down doors, setting the score In my story, I'm the law Every door you close, I find one Welcome back, welcome back. Now listen, what I just did. I said to myself, wait a minute, that's the wrong song. That is not my new song for today, but I will play the new song before at the closing of the show. It's called Ditch the Mask. And it's so crazy because now that I'm thinking about it, the song actually go really well with the with what I'm talking about today, which is following your passion. You're listening to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. I'm your host, Audrey Bell Kearney. Today we're talking about how to make money from your passion. That wasn't my new song. I played that song yesterday. That was yesterday's song. I forgot to pull up the new song, which is called Ditch the Mask. So be sure to stick around. We'll be we'll be back in a few minutes with the song. But let's get on back to the show. So you're thinking about starting your if you're thinking about your passion, right? Think about things that you do. Think about things that you love. Think about things that you would do, whether or not people paid you or not. And then I want you to pick that thing and focus. Don't do like me. When I tell y'all don't do like me, don't do because once you get bitten by the entrepreneur bug, you kind of lose your mind a little bit. You become a person who can't think of nothing else but great ideas. Now, that's not everybody. That's most people. And I tell you how I know. My daughter is the total opposite of me. She puts her mind on one thing and she kind of stays in that one lane. Me, God gives me so many amazing ideas and they come all the time. And I want to do all of them all the time. So it's like a drug for me. Entrepreneurship is like a drug for me. Don't let that be you. I want you to pick one thing and go all in on that one thing. Now, I have to constantly force myself to do that on a regular basis. I am in media. I have to stay in media. I want to go in e-commerce every now and again. <laughs> I want to go into arts. All of these things, I be, and I struggle. Y'all, I don't want that to be you. So once you discover what your passion is, I want you to focus on that one thing for one entire year. That's it. Now, will you have some some ancillary things that come off of that one thing? Yeah, and that kind of makes sense. Like for me, Good Morning Gwinnett is it, right? It's my thing. But Gwinnett Morning Spark is just like another ancillary product to that. So that's a newsletter because you should be collecting. You should have a newsletter. Right, Whatever you decide to do, you want to have a newsletter. You want to have some kind of mechanism that's um, taking people that come to your website, getting their contact information, and building a database of people, of customers. And here's why you want that. Because in the world that we live in, where the internet is everywhere, and you can reach people all over the world, there are a few companies that own the freaking internet. Right. If you're relying on Google to make money, whenever Google decide they want to change their mind about something, they pretty much screw you. When you're relying on Facebook to make money, whenever Facebook decide they want to change their mind about something, they can just change. It, it has nothing to do with what's good for you. When you own the email list with your customers, your clients, your prospect, your prospects, you own that list. You can talk to those people whenever you want to. Nobody can stop that. So. The newsletter Gwinnett Morning Spark made a whole lot of sense to be it, it, to be an ancillary ancillary product for my company to be a companion for the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. So they go together. So yes, it's another piece, but it goes together with, with what I'm doing. There is a there is an embed link on my website, so people go to the website they they can subscribe. There is a link to the podcast in my newsletter, so if they click on the newsletter, they can go listen to the podcast. So you see how the two go together? It's not different. They go together. They're companions. They work together. So once you discover your passion, I want you to commit to it for one solid year. 
I want you to commit to being an expert in that space if you're not already. I want you to find your tribe of people who are doing the same thing you're doing so you can talk about stuff. They're on Facebook. They're on Meetup. They're on they're, they're, they're on Instagram. Find your people. That's going to be important. Why is that going to be important? Because there will be days where you want to quit and you need somebody to talk to. There will be days when people will not support you and you're going to cry. And you need somebody to talk to. There will be days when you question why I started this. Why did I listen to that crazy entrepreneur woman on that show talking about start a business from my passion and everything is falling apart. I can't go on trips. Nobody wants to hang out with me. You're going to need your tribe. Now, you may want to join a Facebook group. You may want to find a meetup group, but you're going to need a tribe. And guess what? If you cannot find a tribe, this is what I told my daughter this morning. If you can't find your tribe... Create a tribe. You can go to Meetup and set up your tribe. And guess what Meetup is going to do? It's going to tell the whole Meetup crew, hey, Jill just started her tribe over here and she wants you to join her. Meetup is going to go find your people and send them directly to you. I That's what I love about Meetup. Meetup will find your people and send them directly to you. I have three groups on Meetup. I didn't find not one person that's a part of those group. I think one group got 270 some people. One got 108. None of those people did I go out and solicit. Meetup found all the people and sent them directly to me. Create your tribe. If you don't have a tribe, create your tribe. That is so very important. So important. Right? So now you're committed for a year. You got your tribe together. You learn everything you can about that. Now you want to know how to make money. So it depends on what you're doing, what you're passionate about. So let's say, for instance, you're passionate about writing and you write some books. Well, if that's the case, what you want to do is spend every waking moment after you have written that book to learn everything about Amazon KDP. Everything. You want to learn everything you can about self-publishing. I know you want somebody to buy your manuscript and give you this big advance. It normally does not happen that way. And if you're sitting around sending out letters and getting rejected and feeling bad because you're getting rejected, you're wasting time. You go write the book, let somebody edit the book, let somebody format the book because you're the writer. You don't need to edit. You don't need to format. You need to write Give it to an editor. Let the editor edit. Let the person that's going to format the book, format the book. You want them to format the book for KDP. And you, while they're doing that, because you have already written the book, sent them the document in Word, while they're doing all of that, you are learning everything you possibly can about Amazon, KDP, and self-publishing. Everything. How to get your book on audio, how to create an app for your book, how to get your book on Alexa. You're learning everything about the book for one solid year. Now that you've learned all of that, the book is on Amazon. The next phase of that, and this could be anything, y'all. I'm just talking about books because that's some of the, that's these are some of the things I've done and do. I'm working on a new book right now, as a matter of fact. Um, once you've done that, the next thing you got to do is 100% nothing but marketing. You got to get out there. You got to go on podcast interviews. You got to go on book tours. You got to go to the library and do readings. You got to go to wherever you got to go to to, to market that book. That's what you got to do. If you don't have any money, you got to write a bunch of content. You got to reach out to a lot of people to talk about the book. That's what you got to do. Now, let me just put this in perspective for you because somebody said, well, I don't have a lot of money. There are about 5.4 million podcasters right now. It's probably more. Guess what they're looking for? They're looking for you, the author, the entrepreneur, the crafty person, the person living on passion, the purpose, the person living on purpose, the person making a business from their passion. They're looking for you. They want to hear your story and they want to share it with their, with their tribe. What you got to do, you got to go to Apple Podcasts, you got to go to Spotify, you got to go to Spreaker, you got to go to Lipson, you got to go to Buzzsprout, you got to go to Riverside, you got to go to Captivate, you got to go to all these places. And you got to find the people that, that are looking to talk to you. Yep. And you say, hey, my name is such and such. And here's why I believe my story will be a great entertainment or education for your audience. And you pitch yourself. And yes, you're going to get rejected. Let me just say that part. You would definitely get rejected. But here's the thing. Somebody's going to say yes. There are magazines still digital, ma- thousands of digital magazines. Guess where? They're waiting for your story. 
You know where you're going to find them at? You're going to find them on a website called Issue. I-S-S-U-U. I-S-S-U-U. You're going to find them on Issue. You're going to find them on MagCloud. M-A-G-C-L-O-U-D.com. These are magazine publishers. They're looking for you. They're looking for your story. You're going to spend nothing but the rest of that year doing nothing but marketing that one book and your story. Now, that's for we're going to do that for we're going to do that for 6 months. Right? So the first year, the first let's split this up. So the first 3 months you're going to get the book on Amazon, you're going to learn everything you need to know. The next 3 months you're doing nothing but marketing. That's all you're doing. The next 6 months just marketing. The last 3 months, right? You have a course or you have a workshop or you have a training or you have a membership site because now you have done your work. You have went out there and you have marketed yourself for six straight months. That's all you've done. That's it. You sent out flyers. You've sent out postcards. You've been to events. You've been to craft fairs. You've been to expos. You have been showing up everywhere with that business. This is what we used to do back in the day. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, my time is so limited between running the, the business and the chamber. It's hard for me to get out there and do that. And maybe next week in part two, I'll talk about what you should be doing um, when it's just you, how to, how to leverage some of these great platforms. But right now, I want you to think about what kind of course or membership or whatever you can offer after the book, because the book is going to die down because you're going to get burnt out from, I'm just keeping it real. You're going to get burnt out from all of the traveling. My husband and I, when we did the dog company, we traveled so much by the time September rolled around, we were completely burned out. Georgette was my partner, but she was in Texas and she was doing her, she was, she was doing her, she had a job and I was on the East coast running the business. My husband and I, people thought he was my partner because we did so much traveling up and down the highway, up and down the, by the time. And I'm never going to forget it. It was September when I realized I am burned out, but I was at every doll show, every doll expo. I was wherever they were, wherever they were selling dolls. I was there. And we were so tired. And he reminded, remember, he worked a full, he worked a full-time job. Like he worked full time and he still managed to get with me on the weekends. And we did traveling. You're going to get burned out. When you get burned out, you need something else to fall back on. By this time, people know who you are because you have done nothing but six months worth of just straight marketing and getting your name out there, building your brand. Now you have your following of people, your true 1000 fans. And they, now they're going to be a part of your community, your paid community, or your paid training. It, you have to figure out what that is. This is how you're going to make money from your passion. You, I talk to people all the time. The, 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 my friend who is, a, now she's a client. She's my friend, but she pays me all the time for something. All the time. She was in my membership program for a while. She's in the chamber. So she's always paying for stuff. This is how you, I love talking about business. If you have not figured it out yet, this is what I love. And I love this, the medium in which I do it, which is podcasting. And I love my publishing, my newsletter. I've been doing these things for years and I've done so many things instead of just focusing on the thing that I love. So for 10 years, I wasted a lot of time. Well, not really. I learned from those experiences, but here's the thing. I wish somebody had told me on April, on um, what's the day? May 7th on May 7th. Shout out to Gregory, um, Gregory Gandy. Happy birthday. Um, Gregory Gandy is his birthday. Um, I wish someone had told me that I could have picked one thing and stayed with that one thing and just grew that one thing. When I first started doing podcasting was 2009. I had no idea that it would become what it has become. I had no idea if I had known then what I know now, I would have been a multimillionaire doing the thing that I love talking to people on this microphone about the things that I love. And I love helping them with business technology, love those things, publishing. The reason I can sit here and run this game plan for publishing is because I have been writing books since 1998. My first book was written in 1998. I have been self-publishing since 1998. So this is why I can tell you the game plan to run your book. But here's the thing, that same game plan can be used for anything, whether you have a body butter, whatever it is, the same game plan. Do the, set everything up, get your website set up. If you got a product that you're trying to get out, get it, get the product done, get the product done, get the product done, get your website done, make sure everything is in place that you need. And then that the first three months, 
All you're working on is a product, the product industry, understanding the product, getting the website done, putting all of that stuff together. The next six months, you're marketing. Guess who you're marketing to? Podcasters, magazine publishers, bloggers. That's who you're marketing to. You want to tell your story every way you can tell your story. I'm about to go on a story tour right now because I got this, this incubator that I'm launching for the chamber. I already know what I got to do. Right, I got a meeting on Thursday. After that meeting, I'll be 10 toes down pushing the incubator. I'll be 10 toes down pushing the incubator. Guess what I'll be doing it? I'll be doing it on magazines, podcasts, blogging. I'll be doing it at, at, at um, not at fairs, but at um, conferences, workshops, lunch and learns. I'll be everywhere talking about this thing because we have a huge goal and that's to help 25 people launch businesses in the tech space. That's a, that's a big feat, y'all. That's a big feat. So I'll be doing exactly what I'm telling you to do. That's what I'll be doing after Thursday. So I'm going to have a wonderful weekend. And then on Monday, I'm going to do the show. And then I'll be 10 toes down and putting, putting out information about what we're doing with this incubator. You can do this in any market. You have to find, you have to pick one thing though. And you're going to get the shiny object syndrome. I'm just going to tell you that you're going to get that. So what you want to do is Avoid any shiny objects at all costs. If they don't directly correlate with what you're doing, don't do them. If they're in different in different industries, do not do them. If they're in your industry and it makes sense for them to be paired with your business, then that's a good thing to do. But if they don't, then don't do that. That's going to be a problem. Now, you're selling something. Your book is on Amazon. Your book is on Books A Million. Your book is on Barnes & Noble. Your book is everywhere. And I say Amazon because Amazon is the most simplest way to get started. There's also a company called Ingram Sparks. Ingram Sparks. Check them out. You can get they are a book distributor. They've been around for years. When I first started out, I used all of these platforms. They put your book in the library, they put it everywhere. But if you're gonna use Ingram Sparks, don't use Amazon first. Let them distribute to Amazon. Now let me just say this you're gonna make some money, you're not gonna get rich. But what you will be doing in the, in, the, in the interim is building up a brand. So if you can figure out an ancillary product to go along with the book, whether it be like, and it doesn't have to be your product. It could be somebody else's product. It just, it's a compliment to your book and you can make money off of it. Maybe it's an affiliate program or something that goes with your book. If you wrote, if you wrote a book about weight loss and that's what you talk about and you talk about the best vitamins to take well become an amazon affiliate push a book and and the vitamins right through the, with your with your with your affiliate so many ways to do this but what i want you to do is what i want to talk to you about is whatever it is whatever you're passionate about if you make candles if you're passionate about candles there are people who are passionate about candles cuz people love candles i have four candles sitting right now in my eyesight, I have candles behind me. People love candles. If candles are your passion, document your passion. Grow your YouTube channel. Grow your Instagram channel. Grow your TikTok channel. Guess what that's going to do? You're going to become an influencer and people are going to come to you. And all you're doing is showing people how much you love candles. And they're going to want to pay you to get in front of your audience. This is what I was telling my daughter this morning. She has an audience. Her, her TikTok is like 12000 or something. That's an audience. She said to me, well, who am I going to, who, I mean, I don't have an audience. Girl, you got an audience. You got 12,000 followers on TikTok. That's not simple because I don't have, I don't even have 500, I think. I don't even know if I got 200 on TikTok. You got 12,000. So you got to leverage your audience. You got to build an audience. So if you know that I love making candles and that's all I really want to do, but I want to make some passive income, then create you a, a social media channel. Pick one. Again, I know you want to do all of them. Because they're so exciting. Pick one. Pick one channel. If you are making candles, I would say pick YouTube. Why? Because people go to YouTube to learn about stuff. This is why I'm on YouTube every single night. I watch YouTube before I go to bed. Go there and you share your story by starting your candles, how you made the sense, all of this great stuff. Right? Now people are following you. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to start to build a following. Then you could probably become a YouTube partner. And when you become a YouTube partner, YouTube starts to pay you money. Pick your platform. My platform, my main platform is what you hear me doing right now, podcasting. People pay to be on my show. People pay to advertise on my show. People pay to be on the website, podcasting. My newsletter is my second big thing. I think this is going to blow my podcast out the water, honestly. 
I'm just trying to see which one is. It's like a game right now. Like it's like I'm game for me. Which one of these is gonna make me the most money? I love both of them. I'm doing them both together. They, they're cross pollination here. I put the newsletter on the podcast. I put the podcast on the newsletter. So it's crop cross pollination. It's just gonna be interesting to see which one is gonna take off. Which one is gonna be the biggest? So. I got a whole bunch of stuff about, you know, following your passion and starting a business. So once this episode is over, go to the website, goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen, to watch all of the, I mean, to, to read all about all of the other steps. Like I just talked about the main steps, which is really finding your passion and focusing on that passion and then spending some time marketing. But there's a whole outline on, you know, what you need to do, you discover your passion, develop a business plan, you know, get your, get everything legally set up the way it's supposed to branding and marketing, get ready to launch, manage and grow. All of this is going to be on the Good Morning Gwinnett website. So once this episode is done, give me about 15 minutes. We're going to drop the audio over there. And then the, the page will be live at goodmorninggwinnett.com. I hope this helps somebody. I hope that I hope that it didn't sound like I was rambling. But when I talked to my friend and my daughter this morning, they were both excited because they have decided that th- these things I am truly passionate about. And it took you to help me figure it out. My daughter figured it out on her own. But my my friend, you know, it was a conversation that she and I had, and it was a very, it's a huge need. And so I gave her all of these all of these um things to go out and do. Like you got to go do this, and I'm gonna I gotta send both of them a an email saying these are your next steps. Both of them. My daughter said send mine an email. My friend said send mine an email. I'm even making a song for my friend to go along with hers. I'm so excited about that part. Like I'm gonna send her her next steps, but I'm also gonna send her. A song to go along with what she what what her talk is about, which is it's called Love Speak, and it's really cool. All right, y'all, I could talk about this all day, every day, and twice on Sundays, but I'm not gonna bore you any longer. I'm gonna go to my last song, which it should have been my first song, but it's my last song. It's called Ditch Ditch the Mask, and um, this is this is the this is the song. The song I played previously was a song for yesterday. The song I'm playing right now is a song for today. So I'm going to play this song, then then I'm going to come back and bring you my words of inspiration for today. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Yo, listen up. It's time to face the facts. You're living life wearing all these masks. Fake smiles, hiding what's true inside. But it's time to break free, let your real self rise. Tending to be what you're not and cool It's like living life stuck in a fool's pool You gotta ditch those masks Let your light shine Authenticity's the key The ultimate sign Ditch your mask Show the world your truth Let your colors fly from your head to your boots No more hiding signs of evil Embrace who you are
Get your mask, baby. Ditch your mask. Get listen. Let your true self let your true self show. Stop hiding behind that mask and ditch it. That was a, that was the um that was the title for the newsletter today. If you have not subscribed to the newsletter letter yet, go to GwinnettMorningSpark.com. If you have not subscribed, subscribe. You'll get the you'll get that song every morning in your newsletter at get a song every morning in your newsletter at six a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, listen, y'all, that's all I got for you today. But before I go, I want to give you my words of inspiration. I think this is a good word. Here goes. The greatest tragedy is not death, but life without purpose. Ooh, ooh, let me say it again. The greatest tragedy is not death, but life without purpose. Listen, there are so many great ideas in a graveyard. You know why? Because people didn't have the courage to follow their purpose. People didn't have the courage to step out on faith. They just didn't have the courage. If you're listening to the sound of my voice right now, I want you to muster up the courage to do the thing that you're passionate about, to do the thing that that you're purposeful about. Muster up the courage no matter what. Find your tribe that's going to help you. I'm telling you what I know for a fact. I didn't get this far in 27 years by being around people who didn't understand what I was doing. I didn't get this far for 27 years by giving up on my big ideas. And Lord knows I have a lot of them. I didn't get this far. I didn't manage this for 27 years being being somebody who I wasn't. Did I chase money for 10 years? I certainly did. But guess what? The last six years has not been the case. I've been loving this. Has it been easy? Has not. But will I keep doing it? Yes, I will. Because I love what I do. I love being able to get on here and talk to you guys every day. I love it. So I will keep doing it. Find the thing you love and do it, baby. Don't waste no more time. Today is your day. It's a new moon. It's a new you. Make new habits. Do big, Build new dreams. That's all I got for you. Could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last 46 minutes with me. And I love and appreciate you for that. Thank you so much for listening and staying tuned for so long. If you miss any episodes of this show, be sure to go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to all past episodes there. And on that website, it is ways for you to support the show. Please, by all means, support. Inside of the inside of the description of the show, there is a link for you to support the show. Support the show, please. I appreciate that. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. I have a guest tomorrow. We'll be talking politics. Yes, it's Power Player Wednesday. We'll be talking politics. So join us at 10 a.m. live. We'll talk politics. Um, as a matter of fact, it's going to be on the live stream. So be sure to subscribe to the Good Morning Gwinnett YouTube channel so you can watch that interview live. It won't be live on audio. It'll be live on video. But in order for you to get the live stream or the video, you have to go to Good Morning Gwinnett on YouTube. Good Morning Gwinnett. Subscribe to the channel. I need to put that in the link too. Subscribe to the channel so you can watch the live interview. We're going to be talking to Superior Court Judge Candidate Miss B.T. Parker. And she's going to be talking about why she will make a good Superior Court Judge here in Gwinnett County. So be sure to tune in. Go to YouTube.com forward slash Good Morning Gwinnett. And check it out there. Also, you can go to my um, Good Morning Gwinnett page over on Facebook. And you can also watch it live there as well. All right. So stay tuned tomorrow, 10 10 a.m. live video interview. We're talking politics tomorrow. This is like the only time I talk politics on the live. All right. You guys have a wonderful day. Enjoy your Taco Tuesday. I'll be back again tomorrow, 10 a.m. God willing. Until next time, my friends. Until next time, make it a wonderful and great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.